As always, before we get started, let's go over some of the design characteristics that I wanted for this kitchen galley. I needed it to maximize storage. I needed it to be affordable. And I also wanted it to be very contemporary and clean. This kitchen galley is actually made from several parts from the IKEA catalog that I ended up mixing and matching to suit my needs. Um, the main reason why I decided to go with an IKEA uh, frame uh, is mainly for cost. I actually looked into renting a shop space. I'll try to put a video or a photo of the space that, that I was going to rent out in Berkeley, California. But the landlord uh, is actually a retired furniture maker, um, wanted six months minimum on the lease, and it was about $300 a month. So I, the, the monthly rate was actually pretty good considering all the tools that he had. He had some awesome table saws, a planer, um, band saws, uh, you name it. Um, but I did not need the space for six months. So um, cost-wise, that was just not efficient. So I wanted something that was um, very precise and contemporary. And the only way I could do that without a shop was take something that was already built and kind of uh, modify it to my needs. So you can see we have a Knox Halt. Uh, cabinet base with Maximira drawers and I modified some of the drawer faces to match the uppers so everything is copacetic um, and you can see that this butcher block is um, a little bit smaller than what you're used to seeing I actually cut it down from 25 inches to 21 inches so everything is kind of shrunken down and given and I gave myself a little bit more of a, a walking space here down the aisle the uh, countertop itself is a Ikea butcher block. It's called Pinarp. I'll link to that down below. Uh, but it has this nice, real rectangular uh, veneer finish. I should add that making your kitchen galley out of Ikea engineered wood will not be as strong as if you were to make it out of uh, uh, something such as birch plywood or some other um, hardwood or solid wood uh, material. So you're going to have to make um, some improvements to the to the countertop as you go. You'll see in some of the more raw footage, I actually ended up 
um, putting silicone or painting wherever there was a raw edge where you could see the, the engineered wood. And I also um, put angle brackets or stiffeners wherever there was a 90 degree uh, condition so that um, there'd be less movement. Uh, you'll also see that I um, that I attached the kitchen galley to the wall of the van using some of the existing holes, just like the uppers. And I used two by four planking on the back side to attach the kitchen galley to, uh, almost like backing. And the whole thing is really solid. It doesn't shake at all. And there's no rattling when I drive. So I'm really happy about that. One of the hardest design decisions that I had to make was whether or not to install and cut in the induction cooktop on the butcher counter countertop here. Um, in the end, I actually decided not to cut it in. And you'll see some of the big manufacturers like Winnebago, they stopped doing that in their own spec builds. Um, I opted to have the induction cooktop just in this drawer. You can either cook in the drawer, put your pan here while you're, while you're in this area of the galley. You can go back and forth between the cooktop and the sink and the counter, or you can take this whole thing and put it on the counter if you like. So you got kind of best, best of both worlds with this setup. I went with the Isotherm 85 Cruise refrigerator. This guy is pretty much sold out everywhere. Uh, I had to call a couple different different uh, distributors and everyone was basically sold out since since everybody's pretty much building a van or a camper these days. Um, what I ended up asking them was if they had any open box or used uh, refrigerators. <clears throat> and I had a couple in mind and this was one of them on my list. And this one happened to actually be an open box unit that wasn't in the, uh, the stock registry. And they just had it sitting, sitting in the back. Um, it's perfectly brand new, but I uh, uh, got a pretty good discount on it because it was used. So it uh, helps to just ask around and, and make sure if there's any extra stock in the back. So I got really lucky on that one. Has a built-in refrigerator, or I'm sorry, built-in freezer. Store some ice cream in there and then plenty of space for a uh, weekend trip or you know, groceries. For I wanted a built-in trash receptacle for a couple of reasons. I didn't want, I didn't want my trash can kind of wobbling around or rattling when I'm driving. Uh, and I found this receptacle that's actually a slider and the dimensions fit just uh, perfectly to allow it to pull out without hitting the adjacent door. So that's awesome. And it, and as it recoils back into its, uh, into its place, it actually locks in and you can see that when I push it in here. All right. So the sink that I went with is a 15 by 15 Rabati sink. It's stainless steel and it comes integrated with its own cutting board with um, with a uh, solid walnut uh, wood. And the sink itself is actually very, um, very nice. It comes with its own colander so you can wash you know, vegetables or fruits right in the sink and take this thing out um, and, and put it outside or wherever you want. And, um, yeah, it's just a very nice deep sink. You can put your dishes in here and close it up if you want to, if you want, if you want to do it later. Um, the faucet that I went with, I'll link these down below. I can't actually recall the name, but they, they're, they're able to swing out here so you can have access to the complete 15 by 15 opening. It's actually a little bit smaller than that. Um, but but uh, the soap dispenser here doesn't actually come with a hole, so you're going to have to uh, cut that out yourself. So that's kind of nice so you don't have like a... Uh, you know, a soap bottle kind of flying around when you're driving or have to put it away when you go drive. So, um, very nice, clean setup. I have my uh, water pump switch located right here, not on the butcher counter countertop, so it doesn't get wet. And, uh, yeah, very efficient design. So, I'm pretty happy how all this turned out. I'll show you guys how I built this thing um, in some of the more raw footage. I almost forgot to mention, you may have noticed I swapped out the cabinet pulls for a more low, more low profile variant. Um, the previous version stuck out almost an inch and a half. And 
I, it wasn't noticeable up here, but when you got down to the hip level, you started hitting your uh, your hip bone on it, and that was very unpleasant. So swapped it out. These ones only stick out about half inch, and I think they look nicer with the wider profiles. On this side of the van, there's only one area where I had to use a contour gauge to cut this uh, uh, body frame out from the base of the cabinet. You can also see one of the angle brackets I used to stiffen the stiffen the the cabinet frame on the left there. I also used wood glue wherever we had dowled connections. Here you can see I used plus nuts in the existing holes of the van frame. We're going to insert these hanger screws into the plus nuts we just created. You typically find these at the foot of a couch um, or some furniture. This uh, will go into the plus nut and we're going to push our 2x4 on the pointed end, which will give us the exact location where we need to drill. From here, we just push the 2x4 into the pointed edge, and it should leave you with, a, leave you with an impression for you to drill into. Once you have the 2x4 mounted, now you have a very secure way of mounting the base cabinet onto the wall. You can see I did this using the L brackets again. Doing this all the way across the base cabinet resulted in a very rigid frame. This thing doesn't rattle or, or move around when the van is in motion at all. I went through several iterations for how much overhang I wanted on the front and on the sides until I decided on what I wanted. Along with screws, I used silicone to remove any of the rattling or squeaking when the van is driving, and I also put silicone on the back edge of the countertop. I also put sealant between the backsplash and the countertop just to prevent any water from getting in there. You can see I used T-nut hardware and a bolt to securely fasten the two pieces of base cabinets together. Before you cut the hole for your soap dispenser, make sure the reservoir doesn't conflict with the sink below or any of the other piping. The Rivati sink actually comes with a nice template for you to lay on your countertop, but always double check the dimensions before you cut into it. Here are all the different components that come with the sink assembly. You have your sink, strainer, uh, cutting board, your colander, your drain, and the template. Finalizing the location of the sink definitely took longer than it should have. I used a jigsaw to cut the countertop, and I used a blade specifically for finish wood, so you can see the, fit, the profile is slightly different.
We're going to start off by drilling a hole on all four corners, just enough to get our jigsaw blade into. Just a quick reminder to always remove the battery whenever you're changing out the blade. I've seen too many vid videos online of people not doing this. Also tape off your jigsaw and the countertop so you don't scratch your beautiful new surface. Just another reminder why you should always wear your safety goggles when you're using a jigsaw. I actually couldn't find mine, and when I was cutting this this countertop, I had to use my cycling goggles, so it actually worked out. I used a hole saw to cut the soap dispenser hole into the body of the sink. Uh, make sure you tape this area off so you, in case you slip, you don't scratch the surface of the sink. I also used a center punch just to get me a head start and make sure that my, my uh, drill would stay centered. Similar to the uppers, I'm using magnet latches to secure the drawers into place. We have to use the mini magnet latch on the drawers here because there's not that much space underneath. Quick tip, tape your drill bits so you don't end up drilling through the finished face of your cabinets. When the latches are in and fastened correctly and aligned, you should hear a very satisfying click as soon as you close your drawer. I almost forgot to mention one of the key features in the placement of my kitchen galley was to be able to utilize my driver's side swivel seat without hitting my knee on the edge of the kitchen galley. So the placement worked out perfectly. I'm able to swivel all the way around and even adjust it accordingly if I need to um, for somebody um, larger than myself or smaller than myself. All right, I hope you guys like this video. If you have any questions, be sure to put them down below. I'll try to get to them. As always, the products I used are in the description with a link available for you guys. And as always, make sure you hit that like button. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. It's, uh, it really helps out and, and helps the uh, YouTube algorithm uh, reach, reach other viewers who are also building vans. So appreciate you guys, and I'll catch you on the next project.